Well, good morning. This is Pastor Keith Hodges, and I want to welcome you today to Every Day Sunday. And I want to go ahead and wish you a happy New Year's. Uh, and it is New Year's Eve, and we're going to get ready to step into a brand new year. 2020 is coming to an end. Uh, can I get a praise, Lord, from somebody? It's been a challenging year, and 2021 is about to begin. And so I pray that today uh, you are anticipating, and most importantly, not just anticipating, I pray that you're preparing your heart for 2020 to be the year that God wants it to be. And I want to invite you this coming Sunday, uh, we're going to begin a brand new sermon series, Kickstarting 2020. I believe we've got a word from the Lord uh, that we're going to be sharing at our ARAB and our Holly Pond campus, myself and Pastor Ian. Uh, and the word is simply entitled Unshakable. And we're going to look at some powerful truths this Sunday, kind of starting into this brand new year. And we're going to recognize some unshakable things in our lives and how those unshakable things uh, impact Empower us to live an unshakable life for the glory of God. And I believe that this year, uh, 2021, the world needs to see an unshakable church. Come on, somebody. They need to see believers that are not moved away by the things that are happening around us, but are steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So come out and join us this Sunday, uh, 8 o'clock and 9.30 in ARAB. That's our new service times. And 11 o'clock uh, in Holly Pond. And of course, our online services are 9.30 ARAB and 11 o'clock Holly Pond. We'd love for you to join us in person or online. Come out and uh, just make a fresh commitment for 2021 uh, to be a part of what God is doing. Well, today we're going to continue our series, The ABCs of the Faith, 26 Keys to Unlocking a Life-Giving Faith. And today's letter is the letter P. And of course, we're going to talk today about so many different things, but we're going to talk today about power. Uh, if you're going to have a life-giving faith, if you're going to have a faith that changes your life and transforms your world, you're going to have to tap into the power of God that makes that possible. It is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I want you to just look with me in Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 4 through 8. The Bible says, And once uh, when he, speaking of Jesus, was eating with them, he's already been crucified now, he's resurrected He's visiting with the disciples. He's revealing himself, the Bible says, to over 500 people. He commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the, the gift he promised, as I told you before. For John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? And he replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But look what he says in verse 8. But you will receive power. The word is dunamis in the Greek. It is supernatural, dynamite power. It's where we get our word dynamite. It is a supernatural power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let me just say this to you today. A supernatural life requires supernatural power. If you're going to have a life-giving faith, you're going to have to tap into the power of God through the baptism of the Holy Spirit and through the supernatural work of the Spirit of God in our lives. Now, when you start talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, sometimes that creates controversy and all kinds of people have all kinds of different ideas about what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. I, I want to just simplify today. I, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't have time this morning in a little five minute video to break down what I really believe to be uh, the doctrine or the teaching of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I do want to share with you a couple thoughts today. Number one, I want to share with you that if you're going to live a supernatural life, if you're going to be an ambassador for Christ and you're going to do the works that Jesus did and greater works than what he did because that's what he said, then you're going to have to have the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to be baptized in power. Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, it is that dynamite power, that supernatural power that Jesus walked in. When Jesus was baptized naturally and then baptized supernaturally by the Holy Spirit, it was at that moment that he stepped into the ministry that God had for him. He never performed one miracle. He never healed one sick person. He never even preached really one sermon until he received the power of the Holy Spirit because it was the empowering of the Spirit that enabled him to be the witness of for God the Father. And it is the empowering of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said enables us to be a witness for Him. Jesus came to reveal the Father. We have been sent to reveal the Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. And it is impossible to effectively reveal, to declare, hear me, to declare, display, and demonstrate who Jesus is 
without the power of the Holy Spirit. Think about that. If you and I are supposed to reveal Christ to the world, it is impossible to declare who he is, to display his power, and demonstrate his glory without the power of the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, the Apostle Paul says this, verse 11 through 13. He says, And the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Where does he live? He lives in those of us who have been born again, those who have by faith have accepted the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you've been born again, then guess what? You have received the indwelling person and power of the Holy Spirit. Look what he says. And the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life. He will give Zoe, he will give life, quickening power to your mortal bodies, to your physical bodies by the same spirit living within you. Did you hear what Paul just said? He said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside those who have been born again because you can't be born again until you have been born again by the spirit of God. Then he says this. He says, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. If you follow the nature of the flesh, you will die. But if through the power, there it is, the power, the dynamite, the dunamis, the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. See, the key to a a life-giving faith, a faith that changes your life and transforms your world, is you have to walk in victory over sin, and you have to walk in the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because our world is transformed transformed when we declare, display, and demonstrate the power of God that is made available through the person of the Holy Spirit. So Paul said this, he says, you have the Spirit of Christ living in you. And if you, listen to this, he says, you don't have an obligation to your flesh, but you now have an obligation to the Holy Spirit. So let me just say it like this. I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't about you receiving something that you don't have. Because if you're born again, you have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. So I don't believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit is about you receiving something that you don't have. I believe it's about you acknowledging the one that you do have. God the Father is in heaven. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is seated at the right hand of God the Father where he forever lives to intercede for me and you. The only part of the Godhead that is on earth at work in the earth today is the Holy Spirit. So let me ask you a question. If God the Father is in heaven and Jesus is in heaven, then why are you ignoring the Holy Spirit? Why are you ignoring God on earth in you, given to you to display, to demonstrate, and to declare the power of God? And so I don't believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit is about receiving something you don't have. I believe it's about acknowledging the one, the Holy Spirit who lives in us that we do have. And if you will begin to acknowledge him, we have an obligation not to the flesh. We have an obligation to acknowledge, surrender, and live in light of the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, guess what? When we start acknowledging him, good morning, Holy Spirit. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Lead me, Holy Spirit. Teach me, Holy Spirit. Show me, Holy Spirit. Work through me, Holy Spirit. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. Touch that person through me. Heal them, deliver them, redeem them, rescue them. Do the work that you do, Holy Spirit, because it's not our work. It's his work in us that brings transformation and change. So I want to encourage you today. I can't think of a better way to close a year, and I can't think of a better way to begin a brand new year than in the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So stop trying to receive something you already have and just start acknowledging the one that you do have. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Welcome him into your life. Begin to acknowledge him. And guess what will happen? When you acknowledge the person of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit will begin to be manifested in your life. And what is in you will come upon you and supernatural things will begin to happen. God bless you today and happy new year.